I was working on a video where I read and reacted to a news article called The CDC is Finally Listening to Women About Vaccines. When I received a phone call from my friend, I told her what I was doing and that the article was about women who started having abnormal periods, either too light, too heavy, early or late, after getting a COVID vaccine, when my friend shocked me by casually mentioning that the vaccine had made her go into early menopause. I woke up this morning and I decided to research why this happened to her, determined to help her. And what I found out really freaked me out, people. I spent the entire day watching videos and reading articles on the internet articles in scientific journals, and everybody is going to be very upset. The reason why is that it's bad, and if I'm right, everyone is going to be very upset. Adrian, what are you doing? I'm reading this article from a scientific journal. It says, lipid nanoparticle slash mRNA vaccines are already widely used to protect from COVID-19. They're talking about how they could use these nanoparticles to make a treatment for COVID also, and not just for a vaccine. They start by saying that the COVID-19 virus absolutely did originate in an animal, not from a lab. Are you going to test yourself for COVID? Yeah, in a little while. I'm just trying to figure out what happened to my friend. She's one of those people that had one of those weird side effects with her period after getting the vaccine. Hmm. Here it says viral proteins are inserted into the Golgi apparatus and are transported to the plasma membrane where virons are released and begin infecting neighboring cells. I thought Golgi apparatus was... Uh character and game hinge. No, dude, it's like one of the mitochondria. Anyway, I don't think this article is going to explain what happened to my friend to me. I did find a video from the German news where some reporters and some scientists made a really nice cartoon animation that kind of explained what might have happened to my friend and all the other women who had their period too early, too late, too late, too heavily, or stopped having it at all after getting the COVID-19 vaccine. It's a really amazing video. I'm gonna show you a clip in a minute where a scientist explains with cartoons what might be going on here. The video that I discovered is from DW News. It is called Vaccines are safe for reproductive health. And I think they should win an award for this news video, which had a thumbnail that said something like, COVID virus shown to lower men's sperm count. When I realized what this video was, it floored me. Whether you love vaccines or are firmly against them. I want you to momentarily suspend your sense of absolute disbelief. And when you watch this, imagine that Pippa is saying do instead of don't. Imagine she did not say the rumor is. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> like she just explained to the entire world exactly why women are having these bizarre reactions to the COVID-19 vaccine. What I want to know is why every single reporter in the entire world is all writing the exact same article. Some women are worried their period was late. Some are worried it was early. Some had it heavier than normal. Some had it lighter than normal. And this is all normal. And every single reporter in the world wants to tell you that. And every single reporter in the world interviewed a doctor that also wants to tell you that. And all at the same time, even though they've never agreed on anything else ever before in their entire lives, they all agree that whatever this thing is doing to women's periods 
it's surely harmless. I think I understand why DW News made a video. So, like, without further ado, let's watch DW News together. Reassure everyone in the world that the COVID-19 vaccine is absolutely safe for men and women's fertility. My friend, she's worried about, like, women going infertile and stuff like that and just, like, a bunch of stuff that can happen, and so she's not getting it. And it's not only women who are worried. Men are anxious, too. They fear their sperm count could be affected by the jab. Why are such rumors so persistent? Posts on social media about COVID-19 vaccines and infertility are being widely shared. Some specifically link mRNA vaccines like the BioNTech Pfizer and Moderna jabs to reproductive issues in women. But what does the science actually say? Our reporter Pippa Stevens has a look. To understand why COVID-19 vaccines don't cause infertility, we need to understand a bit of biology. These rumors all swirl around two proteins, the first is syncytin-1. That's produced by women's bodies when they're pregnant. It helps to build the placenta, which helps support the growing baby. Number two is the spike protein on the coronavirus particle. We're probably a bit more familiar with that one. mRNA vaccines train the body to target this protein. And the way they do that is with antibodies. Antibodies are produced in response to a COVID-19 vaccination. The antibodies then recognize part of the COVID-19 virus particle if the body encounters it and stops it invading cells. The rumor is that these antibodies somehow get confused and end up targeting syncytin-1 instead, therefore harming the placenta in the unborn baby. Now, if this were the case, you've got to remember antibodies are produced by natural infections with COVID-19 as well. So if it was the case that antibodies attack the placenta, then you'd expect to see a much higher rate of pregnancy complications in corona-positive pregnant women. And that just isn't borne out in the data. The rumours come from the idea that syncytin-1 and the spike protein look basically the same to the body. Now, there are some similarities, but an analysis by researchers in Poland and the US found those similarities are really way too small to risk confusing the immune system. There is no plausible biological mechanism by which mRNA vaccines could interfere with a woman's reproductive system. That's a fact mirrored by the evidence. mRNA vaccines do not cause infertility. That was a reporter Pippa Stevens taking apart the myth of COVID-19 vaccines causing infertility in women. If anyone knows any details about exactly how this process doesn't work, or has any articles from scientific journals written by real scientists who really know what they're writing, please post links in the comments section of this video. Now let's see what they said about men. What is the picture like for men? Well, to find out more about that, we're joined by Ranjith Ramasamy. He is the director of reproductive urology at the University of Miami. Welcome to you. Now, vaccinations have no influence on female fertility, as we heard there. But what about men? So COVID virus itself has been studied to evaluate effects on male fertility. So the virus itself can adversely impact the sperm parameters and male fertility. So there were concerns when the vaccines came out that the vaccines could also have the same effect on male fertility. And so we investigated on whether COVID vaccines can affect the sperm parameters. And as part of the emergency use authorization, uh, the companies didn't really do reproductive toxicity evaluation as is done for most drugs. And so there was another concern that this safety parameter was not presented to the FDA when the vaccines were rolled out. But you have now published a report saying that COVID-19 is linked to male infertility and sexual dysfunction. What do we know now? So we do know now that the COVID virus can actually be present uh, within the testis and within the penis uh, long after the initial infection. Uh, how it's able to evade the immune system, uh, what it's uh, doing inside these organs after such a long time once the infection is cleared, uh, we still don't know. Further research needs to be done. But it appears that it causes some sort of inflammatory effects adversely impacting both uh, sperm production uh, as well as the blood supply to the penis leading to erectile dysfunction. 
But what do we know so far about how exactly the COVID infection, uh, the COVID effect, uh, COVID infection attacks male sexual health? It affects erectile dysfunction by affecting the blood supply to the penis. Now, one thing all these studies have in common and these sample tests is that they didn't have very, um, they didn't have a big group of participants. How certain are you of the findings? So, uh, the, yes, I agree that most of the studies have been pilot studies with uh, small sample sizes, including our own. Uh, however, uh, we're now uh, evaluating this on a population level. We also don't know if the severity of the COVID infection actually affects erectile dysfunction and whether this is permanent, uh, whether uh, these uh, symptoms will start improving with time, or do men need to be worried about some sort of a long-lasting effect of erectile dysfunction after a COVID infection. I think all of these answers uh, still remain to be studied. What response do you think there should be to all this information spreading about infertility and COVID? Uh, so I think the actual virus itself uh, seems to have a negative impact on male reproductive health, on uh, sperm production, on testosterone production, uh, as well as on uh, erectile function. Uh, I think the information should be loud and clear uh, that uh, men and couples, uh, because infertility is a couple's problem, uh, should try and avoid uh, getting COVID uh, virus at, at all costs. Well, that was interesting. If anyone has any information about how the FDA did not study this before approving the vaccines, please post links about that in the comment section of this video. Because what I have found so far after researching this for an entire day really freaks me out. I started out reading news articles to see what reporters were saying about why women were having lighter, heavier, earlier, or later periods than normal after getting the COVID-19 vaccine. And I found hundreds of articles from all across America and all around the world that all used the same phrase. The wording was, there is no biologic mechanism that could make a vaccine affect a woman's menstrual cycle. All of these articles reassured women that these effects on their menstrual cycles were harmless and temporary. However, I did find a few articles talking about how women went into spontaneous early menopause after having the COVID-19 vaccine, or a COVID-19 vaccine, which I like to call it because there's different ones. And that was the second thing I found that bothered me. It didn't matter if they had had the Moderna vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine, or the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. There were even reports of this happening to women who had vaccines made by companies I don't know the names of in like Russia and India. So then I started to wonder why would every single vaccine against COVID-19 make women have the same, what they're calling a side effect. Then I saw reports about women who were in menopause and had been for years having this same side effect. And also reports about women who were on some kind of permanent form of birth control having this side effect and transgendered men who used to be women who were on gender affirming hormones having the same side effect. At this point, I started to wonder if this was really a period. Because like, there's a lot of things that can cause a woman to bleed out of her vagina that are not a period. If an ovarian cyst bursts, you can get heavy bleeding, even life-threatening bleeding out of your vagina, but that is not your period. So the government and media promised us these vaccines would not cause infertility. Tell me, what is the difference between early menopause and infertility? So after reading what the media had to say, I decided to search for if anyone had ever actually tried to make a vaccine that could prevent pregnancy. And I found out they have been doing it since like 
at least 1990, if not earlier. I found out one of the main people doing it is a scientist who grew up in China and now works in the USA. And her articles are listed under the exact same name, but somehow don't come up in a search unless you go to one of them and search for articles by the same author on the NIH's website, where there are also other articles about making vaccines against pregnancy in women. She was trying to develop vaccines that would target certain hormones and certain proteins that would make the human immune system basically create like an artificially induced autoimmune disease that would prevent pregnancy because the body would attack the placenta or the hormones that made the pregnancy able to be viable. But none of her studies mentioned Sincitin 1. So I then Googled Sincitin 1 and got a bunch of news articles telling me that the COVID-19 vaccine would not affect my fertility. Then I Googled Sincitin 1 and Wuhan. That's when I found the mother load of articles about research, some involving viruses, gene spliced to contain the human gene that produces Sincitin 1 from Wuhan, China. Google Sincitin 1 and Wuhan. Please, for me, because I don't have time to read another article that starts with Trophoblast fusion in placenta is an important event for prez dash next line ervation of a healthy pregnancy. The process takes place throughout the pregnancy and is crucial for the formation of the syncytiotrophoblast layer. I love reading about the syncytiotrophoblast layer. Over and over, like I like reading the word biologic mechanism over and over. The only thing that made my day is how many times I saw the word Golgi apparatus and laughed about the joke me and my boyfriend cracked when I started recording this video. After reading all of these articles, I have come to the conclusion that women are not having irregular periods after getting the COVID-19 vaccine. They are having something like an artificially induced autoimmune disease where their body confuses the surface proteins on the spike protein of the COVID-19 virus with the proteins in their reproductive organs. And that's probably why it's affecting men's sperm counts too, because we all start out as the same fetus. And sometime during a pregnancy, we develop into either male or female humans. That the reason that some women are having abnormally heavy periods or even starting to have so-called periods when they're in menopause or on hormones to stop them from having periods is not that they're having a period, but that they're having a die-off of the internal lining of their uterus, like what would happen if they were having a period. And that the reason that no matter who has tried to make a vaccine is that the virus was designed in a way that it was impossible. And in my opinion, it was purposely designed in this way to make it impossible to make a vaccine against it that would not also cause human beings to have what they're calling reproductive side effects. And that it may not be the fault of the pharmaceutical companies. They might not have even known what they were doing when they were doing it. In my opinion, the COVID-19 virus was engineered in a way to where one of the surface proteins on the spike protein was a 
very close analog, which had such a small similarity to a protein in the human reproductive system that the human immune system would definitely confuse the two. Like, basically, the protein that they put in the spike protein of the COVID-19 virus was like a very, very, very similar close analog to a protein in the human uterus or human placenta that may also exist or have a similar analog in like male reproductive organs. If you're not a biologist but like to do drugs, you might understand the meaning of the word analog. If you do not look it up, it means a molecule that's very, very similar, changed by only like one or a few molecules to where it's like technically not the same but almost the same. If they're vaccines attack not just the exact molecule on the surface of the COVID-19 spike protein, but similar analog molecules, they're too similar for your immune system to not be able to differentiate between them. As Pippa said, meaning they're so similar that your immune system can't differentiate between them, that basically would make a vaccine that would cause what I'm talking about to happen. Okay, people? As I said earlier, people, temporarily suspend your sense of disbelief. Just for a moment. Just for a moment. Israel is bragging they're the most vaccinated country in the world. Israel is doing an emergency study to find out what the long-term side effects of this vaccine they gave to their whole population, or almost their whole population, might be. North Korea has vaccinated 0% of their people. Just that alone, just that alone should scare you. Even without women having mysterious unexplained side effects in their reproductive systems that doctors, reporters, and government officials deny are really happening. Think, just think for one second about what the implications could be if I am right. Suspend your state of disbelief. Be a bit skeptical and think. Like, I'm throwing myself to the wolves here making videos like this. Just to try to make you think, to warn you. Even if it's only a remote possibility, consider the remote possibility I might be right. Consider what the implications would be if I am even remotely right. And use extreme caution when you make decisions. Or when you judge others for their decisions. Or when you place blame on others. Be very careful, people. Now, I would like to make it clear. I am not stating a fact. I am stating a theory that in my opinion is correct. Just like, in my opinion, the theory that COVID-19 was made in a laboratory is correct. Because if my theory is correct, what are the implications? If somebody wanted to kill us and didn't care how long it took, consider the implications. And I would like to thank you for watching this video which I am now going to end by showing you whether I tested positive or negative for COVID-19. All right, we are about to see if I have COVID-19. It looks like I do not have COVID-19. However, they do warn you to look very closely for a very, very faint line. 
just to be sure, I am checking with my light on. And I still see no line. I guess I do not have COVID. 